My name's Amy. I'm from Wheatbelt NRM. So when we're looking for a dung beetle trap site, uh, we need to consider a few different options. So we wouldn't want to put the, a trap in the long grass like this because the dung beetles will be confused by the grass and they may not find the trap. So we'd probably want to try and find somewhere with a little bit of lower grass or, or a clear patch. You obviously don't want to put them in the cow paddock because the cows will get curious and destroy the trap. And if you're going to set more than one trap, you need to place them about 500 metres apart and that should give you different species. So that's always interesting to do, to add multiple traps. So another consideration when you're setting your dung beetle traps is the dung beetles you're expecting to trap or that you have seen activity for have different activity times. Some might fly at dusk, some might fly in the morning. We normally leave ours for 24 hours just to cover that whole, the whole period. And then you should get all beetle activity that's um, active at that time. So we're here today to set a trap up to see what dung beetles are active in this area at this time. It's the end of September, so we're not sure what we're going to find because we're moving into the spring active species. And um, it's a very simple process, easy to do yourself on your own property to see what dung beetle species you've got available at different times of the year. We've started with a simple plastic container with a, a piece of wire mesh. It's important that we've chosen this mesh size so that any dung beetles that are in the area come to feed off the dung and they can fall through the gaps in the mesh. So obviously the biggest dung beetle is about two and a half centimetres, so you want to have a gap that will allow them to fall through into the liquid below. So our equipment that we have is 10 pegs, large pegs to secure it to the ground so it doesn't get disturbed. Our mallet for the hard ground. In here we have collected a kilo of fresh dung in a muslin sleeve. This is a nice juicy cow dung because a lot of our dung beetle species have a preference for cow dung and it has to be fresh because the dung beetles feed off the dung juices. So if it's an old crusty one, it will not work. Alcohol solution and this is what the dung beetles will fall in the liquid below. We've just filled the alcohol enough to immerse a beetle in, so a couple of centimetres in the bottom of the tray. This is important so that then when the beetle falls into the liquid, it's euthanized quickly and efficiently. First thing we need to do is attach our dung to our grating so that it can't get dragged off by curious birds and foxes. We'll just use the zip tie and zip, zip tie another zip to the grating. And we need to ensure the juicy dung pile is nice and obvious to any dung beetles that are in the area. So I'll just zip that on, flip it upside down so we've got the juice showing and then apply it to the top of the trap. We've got some handy clips here which we can just place over the wire and then stabilize the tray in place with some pegs. Ensure that it's solid, nice and solid in the ground. Our poo's loose, but it's still tied in place. And the dung beetles will be attracted to the faeces juices. So dung beetles are not particularly graceful flyers. They just try to get from A to B as quickly as possible and embed themselves in a fresh poo as quickly as possible. So they're likely to hit the side of the muslin at speed and topple into the liquid below. Well, here we are back 24 hours later, come to check our dung beetle trap. It looks that we have, have trapped a couple of nice black beetles. So we're gonna pull it apart and have a closer look at uh, what we've caught. So we seem to have three large back black beetles and a couple of smaller dung beetles as well. It's hard to tell without having them properly ID'd. Which is where we use our very useful Introduced Dung Beetles in Australia book. With all the different species that have been introduced to Australia, we might be able to take a measurement. We seem to have a couple of different species here. 
So this one is around 18 millimetres long. So that gives us some help with ID. But until we get them under the microscope and look at their uh, microscopic features, it's very, very hard to tell what species we've got here, apart from the fact that it is a large black dung beetle. The larger beetles, beetles are generally burrowers, so um, they're awesome for soil health and burying dung at depth. We've also got another very small, probably about seven mils long. He's a, a beetle that lives in dung, but is not a true, true dung beetle. So we'll get these beetles back to the lab to get them under a microscope so we can identify what species they're from, but it's still very promising that we've got a spring active species in this area and um, that we were able to find them today.